Hey, this is Sean, and this is just a little video about how to use the MIDI animator I programmed and uh, have been using for my latest videos. Um, it's an open source program, but it's not standalone. It's just the source code. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use it if you wanted to use it to look at your own MIDI files or make your own videos. So it's based on JMonkey Engine, so you're going to need that. Um, that's at jmonkeyengine, whoops, jmonkeyengine.org, and you just hit uh, download over here, and then you just got to download and install whatever operating system version you have there. Um, let's see, and then I'll put the links to all the websites I mentioned in the video description. Um, and then the source code for my MIDI animator is on GitHub as well. And if you just go to clone or download over here, and then you can just download the zip file and extract that somewhere on your computer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start JMonkey Engine here. Um, so in JMonkey Engine, you want to go up to File, New Project, and you want JME3 Basic Game next. Um, and pay attention to the uh, directory that you're creating this in. And let's see, we can call this MIDI animator thing. MIDI animator thing. That that sounds great. Uh, finish. And so that'll create the directory and your project here. So let's we gotta open that directory. Let's see, we should have it. Here it is. And then if you take the uh, zip file from the MIDI animator from GitHub and you have unzipped that, you should have this in that folder. So all we got to do is copy and paste these files into our project directory here. And we can just hit yes for everything. And yes, copy and replace. And there we go. That should be all we have to do, and now we can actually run it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load up the uh, main file. So if you go to Source Packages, and then My Game, and then Main.java, that's the main Java file. And then if you hit this green button up here, Run, that will run it. Um, and you can choose whatever resolution you want. I'm just going to keep it at 12, let's say 1280 by 1024. And there there it is. And we can see our MIDI file. Um, let's see, if you right click on the screen and click and drag, you can drag around the view. If you hit a control and right, oops, is that right? Oh, sorry, it's a shift, shift and right click, and then you can drag it and it'll make sure it doesn't move up and down. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, w and S, W and S will zoom in and out. Uh, and then if you don't want the, if you're going to make a video, then you probably don't want the music grid behind it. So if you hit G, that'll toggle the music grid. And if you hit the... Uh, if you hit space bar, that will play. So space is start and stop, but if you don't want that play bar, the toggle for that is P. So G and P will toggle the grid and the play bar. Um, if you click on the grid, with the left button, you'll see that little cursor, and that will determine when you hit the space bar where it'll start playing from. So if we want to start playing from over here. Ooh, that's a bit loud, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's all you got to do. Uh, let's see. Colors, we can change the colors. Unfortunately, after you change the colors, there's so far not yet a way to save the colors because I haven't programmed that. Um, but that's just because after I make the animation, I really don't care anymore. Um, but we can we can at least change the colors. So if you hover over a uh, a note, it'll change the color for the entire track. If you hit uh, Control 
and then s uh, the scroll wheel on your mouse and you can that will change the hue um, if you hit control and alt that will change the saturation when you hit the scroll wheel so we can make it really unsaturated very saturated um, and then you hit control alt shift and then the scroll wheel will change the brightness so we can make it really dark or more bright um, let's see if we hit control alt to change the saturation and we change it all the way to white we actually it actually loses the hue information so if we unsaturate it again it'll be at the default hue which is red which is close to what we had before in this example uh, let's see we can change it to make it more saturated, darker. Anyway, we can get pretty much any color there. Um, if you look at the colors, you're, you'll see that there's a slight gradient to it. And when we play it, you'll see that the notes change size a bit as they approach the play bar, and then as they leave the play bar, they shrink. which I mentioned because if we go back to our main Java file we can actually change that right here where it says private boolean use gradients we could set that to false if we didn't want those gradients and animate size we can change that to false if we don't want it to animate the size um, and then finally we've got music grid width per whole note that will determine how wide the notes are so we can change that if we want to make it really long we could change it to something like maybe a hundred that would be that that won't look very good but we can do that see how that looks yeah that looks terrible and of course that means also means it will scroll a lot faster to keep the tempo the same so that doesn't look very good but you could do it um, or we could make it really small, like three. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that that looks that looks really good, doesn't it? God, it's too loud. Um, alrighty. So that doesn't look very good. So I'll just change it back to 30 here. Um, let's see, if we want to load another MIDI file, right now it just loads a default MIDI file. So if we go over here in Project uh, in project Assets, you can see there's a MIDI files folder there. And if you open that up, you'll see there's just the default MIDI that I included with it. But uh, if you have another MIDI file on your computer, like I've got this Fireside MIDI file conveniently waiting over here. That was the last video I made, so if we click and drag that MIDI file to the MIDI files folder it'll make a copy of it there and now we just have to change this file name over here under MIDI file name to the appropriate file name in this case fireside dash MIDI and now it will, should load that MIDI file instead yep there we go and so that's the last MIDI file I made, or last animation I made. Um, so when you're, if you want to make a video, you could, uh, you could screen capture the animation as you play it. Or another thing you could do is, uh, if you hit control space, You'll see it was going very slow there, but that's because it was taking a screenshot of each and every frame. So if you do that, you'll you'll be guaranteed to get a um, completely smooth 60 frames per second animation. Um, and you'll see back in the directory, it saved a picture file for each and every frame. Um, that's usually the way I do it to guarantee the smoothest possible animation. And then what you, you what you've got to do is take all these picture files. Let's see, just a bunch of bunch of picture files. 
Um, and what I do with that is I use FFmpeg, uh, and you can use that to convert the set of images into a, a video. That's what I do. And uh, then I take that video and use Shotcut from Shotcut app. This is just a free open source video editor, and this is what I use to take the video file, take the the MP3 or the WAV file or whatever I have with the actual music, because I don't want to use those MIDI sounds, uh, and then add titles to it. And I do that all that in Shotcut. So those are the tools I use, and that's how to use the MIDI animator. Um, it's free and open source, so if you know Java, you can probably look around at all the files, figure out how it works, and do whatever you want with it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope this was interesting or helpful. And uh, thanks for watching. See ya.